All right, so football still the topic on the Sportsmax Zone. Another weekend, another VAR mishap in the English Premier League. The weekend standout match saw two unbeaten teams, Tottenham and Liverpool, duel at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Tottenham climbed to second with a 2-1 victory, but it was as controversial as they come. Liverpool ended the game with nine men following red cards to Curtis Jones and Diego Jota and had a goal wrongly ruled out for offside. And to compound matters, it was a Joel Matip 97th minute own goal which granted Spurs the win. As expected, Liverpool boss Jurgen Klopp had some fiery words for the referees. How can he? How can the ref explain the situation here? So the the linesman thought obviously it's worth watching, looking again, and that's why he raised the flag. Um, in the good old times, a, a, a linesman should have seen that as well. That this is no offside because you had these situations quite frequently, and when you see it back, it's pretty clear. It's pretty clear. Um, but again, nobody did it on purpose. So I cannot, again, whatever I say here, it just creates headlines but doesn't help the situation at all. So I'm not in that mood. Professional game match officials Limited issued an apology to Liverpool, stating that Luis Diaz's goal was onside and there was a significant human error which led to it not being given. Liverpool issued this statement following the apology. We fully accept the pressures that match officials work under, but these pressures are supposed to be alleviated, not acerbated, by the existence and implementation of VAR. It is therefore unsatisfactory that sufficient time was not afforded to allow the correct decision to be made and that there was no subsequent intervention. That such failings have already been categorized as significant human error is also unacceptable. Any and all outcomes should be established only by the review and with full transparency. This is vital for the reliability of future decision-making as it applies to all clubs with learnings being used to make improvements to processes in order to ensure this kind of situation cannot occur again. In the meantime, we will explore the range of options available given the clear need for escalation and resolution. Well, joining us to advance this discussion is football analyst, former Trinidad and Tobago international, Brent Sancho. Good afternoon, Brent. How are you? Good, Mariah. And yourself? <laughs> I'm doing okay. Um, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I'm not one of the teams that are dealing with this situation. <laughs> but really, really unfortunate, Brent, for Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp. I can see the frustration on his face, and rightfully so. Listen, when uh, Varfus came out, I remember um, making a statement that, look, it's you're going to have mistakes. It's it's the, uh, despite the fact that it was brought in and it's computerized. It's supposed to be technology. At the end of the day, Mariah, uh, the the human being aspect is still very much involved in this. So there will be mistakes. People will make mistakes, um, and so football fans, pundits, coaches, players have to understand that at the end of the day, there will be mistakes when it comes to, with VAR. Yes, this was probably one of the bigger mistakes. But it comes with the territory. We've had a, a, a host of mistakes before far. Uh, we have England walking away with a World Cup because of a mistake. So my point is, they're trying to close the gap in errors. But of course, with human involvement in it, there's always going to be challenges and people make mistakes. Let's start with that red card for Curtis Jones, uh, Brent. It started off as a yellow, then they reviewed the play and he was eventually awarded a red card, having to leave his team. In your assessment and opinion, was it deserving of a red card? I think, I think it's all done. Again, I go back to the human ele element of it. And, and uh, yes, I'll, I'll give my, uh, my personal view on it. But remember, when you're looking at uh, a, free, a freeze screen and, and frames, it's a lot different from looking at it at real time. And I think that really is this, the issue with VAR. And of course, the usage of VAR, because we can make you make a decision on the field, 
Uh, and of course, that decision is dealt with the speed of the game. It's dealt with uh, all that's occurring around it. And of course, the intent as well around that situation. Um, so when you freeze it, you can get a completely different perspective from it. And I think that really is the challenge with all of this. Because someone that sits in a box, in a, in a booth, looking at things from a, a, a freeze frame, and a referee that's in the field that looking at it at live pace, at real pace, intentions could be different. Uh, the feel of the game is different. And I can tell you, as a player, a former player, being on a pitch, being involved in a football game, and being off the pitch and watching a football game, obviously is two different things. Because there are a lot of different things that happen on a pitch that you can never get the feel for when you're off the pitch. And I think that is where the challenge is. They're trying to make on the field decisions with an, an instrument off the field. As I said, yes, I understand why we are doing it because we want to close the gap as it, as it relates to errors. Uh, but I, I think it's, it's a difficult one. And, and yes, I do think on the review, it should have been a red card. Yeah, and Brent, I want to go back to the, the offside issue or onside issue because this is a VAR error like we've never seen before. VAR mistakenly believed that the on-field decision had been to award the goal when it was actually the opposite, and that is, that is where the error happened. Um, there has been a view that when the VAR decision is made, just to say, check complete, given what we saw happen over the weekend, that probably needs to be bolstered by something like check complete goal, check complete no goal, because maybe if that additional information was was entered in the graphic or the decision coming from VAR, the, 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 the problem would, would not have stayed. It would have been corrected. Yeah, I, I think, Lance, when you, you talk about, and I'm happy you, you've touched on that point, because at the end of the day, uh, yes, there are things within the communication, within, of course, the decision-making, that could be cleaned up. And, and let's, be, let's, let's be frank, when this first started, uh, we were we were educated on, on hand positioning, which was natural, unnatural. And I'm quite sure if we gave a diagram to a referee or player and asked them to draw 10 unnatural hand positions, it, it would be probably very comical. Uh, <laughs> the point I'm making is, at the end of the day, as VAR has progressed, they have tried their best to obviously clean things up. Uh, what I've noticed since Howard Webb have come on board and, and, and leading the charge, he's trying to be a little bit more... Uh, of course, transparent in their decision making, uh, of course, issuing the statement that they did. Uh, but to the point exactly what you made, yes, I do feel that those sorts of little things I would like to see improve within VAR, um, but not necessarily the holistic changes of getting rid of VAR and all of the different uh, statements that you hear coming out of the UK as it relates to it. Because as I said, yes, it was a big mistake. I'm very sure there's going to be another big mistake at some point in the future. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you, you rip up VAR because of these mistakes, because at the end of the day, there's a human element involved. And Brent, have you heard anything about possible fatigue being a part of the reason why this one slipped the, the VAR team? Because um, there were reports that the, the, that VAR team or that um, panel had traveled to the United Arab Emirates or some distant venue um, within 48 hours of, of doing the match and with uh, flying time and so on. They, they may, may have been a little tired. Yeah, I think it could be a possibility. Um, obviously, uh, and it must be stated that this is not the first time that uh, referees or officials have been given permission to do midweek games in other countries or other territories. Uh, so this is not thing, uh, abnormal. And, and of course, uh, both officials were given permission uh, to do such. Uh, in, mod in the modern day that we have, I know players uh, fly first class and in, in, in planes and have evolved tremendously that the impact of, of, of long distances of travel, of course, is mitigated. But yes, there, there could be a possibility. There. Does it mean that you stop ref officials from going over? I don't think so. Uh, because again, uh, each human is different. So I can't say for sure whether or not uh, it had an impact. Uh, because as I said, we've had many cases of officials going overseas to do games uh, and they've done quite a good job in coming back so maybe for these two individuals uh, they may have had the, the challenges so so i think maybe a case by case situation but i don't see an issue in it lance as it relates to that particular situation
Yeah, Brent Sancho, I must admit I was gutted when the goal was not awarded to Luis Diaz. Not because I'm a Liverpool fan, because clearly I'm not. I'm a Manchester United fan. But I play Fantasy Premier League and I just brought Luis Diaz into my team <laughs> less than 24 hours before. I had decided against bringing in Bowen and Suchek, who both scored, um, by the way. And so it would have been great if Luis Diaz had scored as well. But uh, thanks to VAR, that was not the case. So I was quite gutted. Having said that, Brent, and, and this may sound ridiculous, but given the circumstances, is there any way, um, and I know there's no precedent for it as well, but is there any way that the goal could have been awarded retroactively? Or would that be doing more harm than good? Yeah, I think that'll be doing a lot more harm. I, I don't know if you jog your memories. There was an instance uh, in a cup game where Arsene Wenger, the then Arsenal manager, uh, replayed a game uh, many a couple moons ago uh, for a similar sort of bad officiating call. Um, but to, like anything in sports, there are mistakes, as I said, uh, and I think athletes and, and, and managers will be disappointed at first. Uh, you know, I have to go back to the, the, the press conferences to both club. Uh, but board managers for that fact. And they, they didn't really stress on, of course, uh, what transpired in the game. They both took it down as a mistake. I think what really bothered me with everything, um, Ricardo, is the statement that Liverpool made. I think it was reckless, uh, and I think it certainly was irresponsible. Uh, because what are you going to escalate it to? You can't do anything about it. It is a result. It's finished. It's done. It's dusted. Move on. Mistakes happen. Over the course of a season, that's how it happens. You may have some situations, and I'm, I'm sure I've seen many situations, a couple of situations where, where Liverpool may have benefited from poor decision-making. But to go along that route, that they, to, to send a letter and ask for audio, I think it's ridiculous and, as I said, very, very irresponsible from Liverpool. Is it really ridiculous, though, Brent, given the magnitude of the mistake? I mean, if you were in a position like that, you would want to know um, and be given all the possible evidence of, of what exactly happened and what was the thinking in that room from the panel, um, given responsibility to officiate the game from a VAR perspective. But the, my point is, even if you've got all that information, what are you going to do with it? They can't change but, what but, is it. But, it, but is. it, but it depends on, on what the information um, brings to the table. It depends on what you hear. It depends on where the evidence leads. But Ricardo, one thing I know is this game will never be played. So if I'm Liverpool, even if I get all the information and all says that it was there was a, a, a human error in the gravest uh, of, of situations, yes, it's knowledge to me, but it doesn't help the fact that I still lost three points. And I think at the end of the day, that is the crux of the matter. The reason why I'm so upset with this statement, because it now escalates the situation with VAR. It doesn't need escalating. It needs for us to keep working with it because at the end of the day, as I said, from when this when VAR first came out, you will have mistakes. You will have uh, situations where people make mistakes. So I don't understand what Liverpool is trying to achieve other than to try and expose VAR and continue this debate to going on. Yes, I, I feel agreed for Liverpool. Uh, I think they were cheated. However, it would never change the result. I think what they should be trying to do is, is listening to ways of how this, these little things can be improved. I don't think hearing the audio or audio being spoken, to, because I to, from where I sit, I expect another mistake in VAR to happen, maybe not this season, maybe the next, because that's just the situation and the type of scenario that we have with this particular piece of device. As I said, because there's a human element involved, you will always have room for error. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> I was just about to say, you know, I, I hear what he's saying, but I have to disagree because one, hearing the audio brand will create some peace of mind for the Liverpool um, coach and the Liverpool players because for me, it's also about, you know, they're feeling very aggrieved for what happened. So if that's what it takes, Brent, then so be it. And another thing is VAR, we have to always remember, VAR was brought in to minimize and eliminate errors. So when things like this happen, of course, Brent, they're going to be very, very upset. For me, hearing the audio, as you said, doesn't give them three points. It doesn't change the results. But you know what? 
it brings light to the situation. It ensures that those humans, um, you know, involved in the decision decision making process, that they are a bit more aware and recognized that making bad decisions can have serious consequences in the competition and you want to keep the competition as serious as possible because it's a competitive one yeah i, I don't yeah, often listen, I'm, not disagree. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not disputing that point because at the end of the day as far as i'm concerned if i was a player in that locker room the only thing i would want as respite is three points yes. let's, let's let's not let's because if you look at things in context, Liverpool possibly will be challenging Man City. And lo and behold, three points might be the difference between them and winning the league. So whether I hear audio, song, apology, dinner date from the referees, I couldn't care less. All I would be concerned about is getting three points. Because I, but my, the point I'm really trying to hammer home here yeah. is that there is going to continue to be mistakes. I don't care what Howard Webb says or what any of those officials say. Once there's a referee, once there's a human element involved in this aspect of the game, they will make mistakes. Yeah. You, you made the, the correct point, Mariah, that the VAR was set up to minimize mistakes. It cannot eliminate mistakes because yeah. there will be mistakes. Yeah. And since we've seen VAR come into play, we've had it. Yeah, the only issue here, though, Brent, that this one really, as I said before, is a, a VAR error like we've never seen before. And this, to me, looks... Completely Correct. unforgivable. Correct. Because what is, what is a fact is that at the moment that VAR recognized that the goal wasn't given, it, it, th th they should have been able to raise an alarm to get the right decision made. And somehow they just sat there and the referee didn't even realize until halftime that a, a grave error had been made. So there is just something yeah, unforgivable, and I'm not unforgivable about this error. But yeah, I'm not disputing that. I agree. Um, but that, that's probably for future situations. Now we can learn from this and put future, uh, of course, uh, implications to place. But that, as it relates right now, there's no three points coming back to Liverpool. And there's no repercussions. There's no replaying game. That does <laughs> you, 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 you know what, Brent Sancho? I don't often disagree with you. This is one of the very few times <laughs> I think I am going to disagree with you. But I'm, I'm with Lance and Mariah here that the decision was so egregious that you have to think that from a Liverpool standpoint, you want the peace of mind of knowing for sure that this was an error, a human error. Um, as pointed out, as opposed to something else. And you cannot blame Liverpool if at the moment they are somewhere in a boardroom thinking, was it really a human error or was it something else? Yeah. And you have to, in my opinion, Ricardo, let me give ask them the, that let me peace ask of question, mind. Not, not to cut you. Let, yeah. let, let me ask the question. Mm -hmm. if, if this happened, the reverse way wrong, four months down the road, would Liverpool write the same letter? It wouldn't be Liverpool's responsibility to write the same letter. It would be the responsibility no, of so, if, the team who felt wronged by the decision to write that letter. No, the point, the point I'm trying to make is, at the end of the day, you, you don't get back. I hear what you're saying about being aggrieved. Yes. Uh, and, of course, trying to find ways to find uh, some sort of comfort in it. But at the end of the day, three points is what matters. Because as I said, if this comes down to the last game of the season and Liverpool loses because of the three points, they would tell you, keep, your, keep all your audio, visuals and all these different things and give me back the three points. But Brent, what I do know from sitting here, yeah. they're never going to get that game replayed and but, it's lost. Brent, they're not going to get the three points. I think we can agree there, but they can mm -hmm. still get peace of mind out of this situation or at least the truth, depending on how they are viewing the situation at this stage. And I think you have to at least give them that, the peace of mind of knowing that it was a genuine mistake. Because in situations like this, um, Brent, Lance and Mariah, you can accept if it is a genuine mistake and if the evidence points to a genuine mistake, but if it points to something else, then that's a lot tougher to accept and I move along without having um, an escalated conversation. And Brent, it's so unfortunate we can't even speak about Tottenham's win because we don't have enough time to do that. And that's even more unfortunate because Tottenham has had a good season. Now, if they go on to win, you know what everybody's going to say? Because they, they cheated Liverpool. VAR was on their team.
unfortunate. <laughs> but, we, we, but you know, my point is this, guys, I know we have to wrap up soon. We have had numerous mistakes in VAR. Ivan, Tony, we, we've had so many. And so many clubs could be aggrieved. We, yes, this is the most grave of all of it, but we've had bad situations as well. But I have not seen anyone, you, you know, got the three points or that sort of level of. And that's that's really my point, because I just know from what I said as a, a player coming, going home after the game, I would prefer three points all day long. Because I don't think, and, and this is maybe where we, we're probably disconnected, yeah. I don't think that VAR mistakes comes to an end after Liverpool's letter. Yeah. Yes. No, it's going to be more later on this year. I'm very sure it's going to be another mistake next week. The, this, and we go on and on and on. This mistake wasn't 50-50, Brent. This mistake wasn't 50-50. And I think that's the major as, issue with this one. Yeah, but Brent, we take as your point. As the Bible say, a sin is a sin. Yeah. Well, Brent, we take your point, And of course, it was good chatting with you here on the Sports Max Zone. We have to run now, but we'll talk again. I'm sure VAR will give us another opportunity to do so. Break time. Next week. No problem. <laughs> no, break time for the good of the game. Can't <laughs> watch